Thank you, ladies, for uh, joining us up on stage right now. We'll uh, get underway here with uh, Ashley Gentle from Australia. Ashley, met you when you were 16 years of age in Australia. We were at a function down in Melbourne, and it was an absolute... Uh, uh, it was exciting for me. Uh, you know, I was getting inducted into something, and you were there, and it was a fun time. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's been a while there, and uh, about 15 more years down the road, here you are, ranked number one in the world in PTO. Did you ever think that that was going to happen in your sporting career? Hello? Um, no, definitely not. I guess um, when I started triathlon, I was about 14 years old and yeah, I was doing my Australian Nationals and I guess I quickly made the Junior World Championships when I was super young, but it never really occurred to me that I could do it as a profession, um, let alone be here today and yeah, looking to, to race one, one of the best races um, of the year ranked number one so I guess yeah I've always enjoyed the sport um, from a very young age and I just feel yeah really grateful that triathlon's taken me to some amazing places and yeah really excited to be here and to get racing. So just like you kids 14 years old when Ashley started 16 she was moving into the junior ranks in the, the world level and now she finds herself ranked number one in the PTO rankings. Ashley, what's it going to take to get the job done this weekend? You've got number one world uh, world ranking and you've got Singapore, uh, you know, in the future here coming up. So you've got a big month and uh, what's it going to take to get the job done tomorrow? Yeah, I definitely think that uh, to defend the title, I'm going to have to have an A plus day. Um, these women sitting beside me, plus, you know, many others on the start line, you know, have a, a, a such strong competitors and all bring their different strengths to the race. So I think that the women's race is going to be really exciting and um, the race is quite dynamic and it will be moving all the time. Um, so, yeah, it's going to take a very, very good day to come out on top. But, yeah, I guess that's what we train for and, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Yeah, very uh, very strong at all three disciplines. Uh, Ashley is also a, quite a devastating runner, so she's got a real weapon at the end of the race. All right, well done, Ash. Let's go over to Taylor Nib. So, Taylor, uh, in 2020, well, 2021, at Tokyo, uh, 16th place in the individual and uh, a silver medal in the mixed relay. So you're already an Olympic medalist, and uh, this year you decided to also be a, a two-sport athlete at the very, very highest level in the world. Uh, not only are you world champion in triathlon, but... You uh, actually did very well at the U.S. Nationals in time trial. Uh, tell us why you went over and, and did the second sport. Well, I'm actually not the best cyclist on the stage. The person next to me is going to the World Championships next week, so that's one better. Um, but I was I was intrigued. It was actually last year I had a foot injury and I could ride a lot. I couldn't really run, and it was one day. And I was just... okay. No, you're good. So I was riding one day and I was like, oh, I wonder when the time trial championships are. And they happened to be the next day. So I, I added it to my schedule to try to help if my foot didn't heal. But thankfully it did. So I get to do both. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that because, uh, you know, you were injured there for quite a while. Uh, I think it was the metatarsal uh, bones in your, your foot there. And it took quite a long time to uh, get recovered, but you came back very well. So you must have uh, got really you know, stuck into that uh, rehab. Just explain to everybody, when you do have a devastating injury like that, how important is it to stay on target and on plan with the rehab? Well, I wouldn't say I handled it super well. I raced the whole fall with a broken foot and I didn't even feel it. So um, that isn't fantastic, but then I had a screw put in and we'll see, like it's hopefully holding for now and that's where it is. Um, at that point in time, you just have to do what you can do and like, you just have to get healed. All right, so you're talking to uh, four of the top uh, athletes in the world right now and uh, they apparently they don't know what pain threshold is. <laughs> so, uh, especially Taylor. So thanks Taylor, good luck tomorrow. We'll get back to you in just a second. Paula, you're off to Glasgow to race in the World uh, Cycling Championships. That's amazing. You're also a multiple 70.3 champion. You've been an Olympian in 2012 and former ranked number one in the ITU uh, World uh, Triathlon and Olympic distance back in the day. It's great to have you here and uh, how are you going to take care of these women tomorrow? 
Yeah, on the bike link? <laughs> no, I, I'm excited to go to Glasgow next week, but my focus right now obviously is in the race in a couple days. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's an overwhelming month if I think about it all at once. So I'm trying to think of it in pieces. And um, the cycling has just been a really fun, different challenge for me. I've been racing triathlon since I was 15 and now I'm 34. So um, to spice it up a little bit and try something new that I... I've had some success with has been really fun so yeah hopefully on Saturday tomorrow I can use the bike to my strength that's kind of always has to be my um, my race plan because my run is not as quick as some of these girls so um, yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes but it's gonna be like a hot fast race it looks like yeah Paul you said it uh, 19 years in the sport of triathlon it's always nice to mix it up and do something different just to keep the freshness there and then you can come back and focus on really what you know your craft has been and that is getting great results uh, in triathlon so good luck to you uh, in Glasgow but very very good luck tomorrow for the race in the afternoon it's going to be a scorcher out there just like it is now so Jackie we'll talk to you Jackie um, you know coming from the USA you're going to be uh, you know one of the favorites obviously what would it mean to you to be the US Open champion on home soil uh, it would be really cool. I've got the hugest fan club here with all my family. <laughs> so. You got a photo before with your family. How many members are here? It was incredible. You wouldn't believe how big this family is. <laughs> so many cousins and so many people. So yeah, it would be super duper special, obviously. Alright, let's talk about the heat and, uh, you know, the conditions because right now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm perspiring quite a lot. But that's because I'm heavy and, and whatever, but that's okay. I'm very, very happy inside of my body right now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we've got the swim that's going to happen at 4.15 in the afternoon. You're going to get on your bikes for 80k and you're going to run 18k. Um, what do you do in a race like this to combat those type of conditions? And do you train in those type of conditions? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've all done, you know, some daytime training in the heat by this point, and we're all pretty much ready. We do a lot of hot racing throughout the year, so I think it's something that we're definitely used to and prepared for, and I'm, I'm positive that everybody's going to navigate it fine. It's really just about kind of trying to keep your body cool and, and stay on top of your hydration. Yeah, if you could give one piece of advice to somebody doing the Olympic distance race or the sprint distance race over the next couple of days, what would it be to do today? Yeah, so today, um, pretty much the opposite of what we're doing on this stage. You want to try to stay out of the sun. Um, <laughs> we're doing a good job staying seated. So it's kind of just like taking it easy on your body, walk, not trying to hit any crazy steps goals, um, and staying cool. I don't like to load just, I don't like to drink too much just straight water, because that's going to mess up your electrolytes. Just drink what you normally drink or drink stuff with some electrolytes in it or you're going to over dilute and be all screwed yeah exactly you can go over to the gatorade tent we got gatorade endurance formula also found out there and now it will be on the course as well and it's probably a good idea to uh go and visit them all right ashley i want to go back to you again and um the pto was formed in 2014 what does it mean to you to have the pto races going on right now with we're going to go for six hundred thousand dollars prize money over the next couple of days. Next couple of days with our men's and women's uh, races here, um, it's incredible prize money. But better still, the ranking system has been formulated as well. So, just explain how important it is to you to have the PTO. Yeah, I guess um, the PTO have created a whole new opportunity for so many middle to long distance athletes that um, they didn't have before and I guess I was quite fortunate that when I left short course I stepped straight into such a yeah I guess professional racing field like the, that the PTO set up so yeah obviously there's great um, financial incentive to race well and stay in the world rankings but I also really like the fact that um, you know we have our own race days we've got a closed course it's very safe all the you know I guess attention and um, is all on the men in this afternoon and then tomorrow we get to go around and you know that you have the whole course to yourself and you just battle it out with the, the females in the field so yeah it's always a great uh, racing environment but you know also a great vibe at all the races before and after as well so um, I think lots of athletes always want to try and get a start. 
Awesome, and Ashley's husband, uh, Josh Amberge, is also racing this afternoon in the men's pro category as well. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would love to uh, watch the race, if you're going to be somewhere or you have a tablet or something like this, go to the uh, PTO website and you can also, you know, just sign up and you can watch the race this afternoon and tomorrow. It's going to be a great way to follow along. If not, you can come down here and listen to myself and Michael Zimmerman. We'll be giving you all the commentary this afternoon and tomorrow at our pro races as well. Over 22 million people watched the shows last year, so hop online, get signed up and uh, you can watch the race along with us guys all right let's go over to taylor taylor you've got a busy august coming up here i mean it's only the first weekend you've got the pto us open then you're going to go off to the paris test event for the olympic games in 2024 and then you could be heading over to lucky for the 70.3 ironman world championships how do you manage that month well, I think we'll see how I managed it on September 1st. Um, but like Paul said, it's taking it one race at a time. And like, I think that each racing opportunity is important. And that's why I've chosen to have the schedule as it is. And I'm excited for all the races, but it's one race at a time and not letting any good or bad thing influence the next day. All right, thank you. Let's go over to Paula. Paula, I've got a question uh, on the course. For you we've got uh, all you need to know is two seven and five right two laps on the swim seven on the bike and five on the run that's a good thing right you get to see your competition every so often we've got a lot of timing mats out there which is going to be a first for the pto we've also got the race ranger on there so we can tell like if you don't know what the race ranger is it's a uh, detection system that goes on the back of an athlete's bike if an athlete comes up on them into the 20 meter drafting zone it will flash red on the back of that athlete that's in front which means that that person has to overtake they have 45 seconds to overtake that to me is one of the best pieces of technology that's come into triathlon over the last few years. I absolutely love it and it's fair game and it's a 20 meter draft zone. Your thoughts? Yeah, the Race Ranger has been a really great um, kind of advancement for non-draft racing. I know a lot of you kids are doing draft legal racing, but what we do, we have to leave 20 meters between bikes, which visually is sometimes really hard to see when you're moving at really high speeds. So. Having this device on our bikes that flashes red if we're within the zone just keeps a really fair race. And a lot of the time we're not even intentionally in the draft zone, but we just slip into it because it's so hard to tell. So um, having the blinking red light and then you back up out of it really quickly is, is really, really good for this kind of racing and just keeps it really fair for us. Um, with such a multi-lap course as it is, the course is pretty tight, the racing is really close. We all train really hard and we're all really fast. So yeah, it just keeps the distance to a legal legal amount. And I personally like the, the out and back looped courses. I think it is pretty engaging and getting time splits and knowing if you're making up time or losing time. It's really fun compared to a lot of other races we do that you're just gone for two and a half hours and then you come back to transition. So the atmosphere will be fun. You guys will hopefully be cheering for us every lap. So we'll get to see you like 13 times. And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited about that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Paula. Before we get to uh, Jackie, we're going to uh, make this uh, nice and uh, inter interaction friendly. So if you've got some questions, start thinking about those. We're going to have about a 10 minute uh, question and answer period coming up in just a few minutes time after we talk to Jackie. So start thinking about those questions and we'll get to you in just a second. Jackie, um, like I was saying to Paula, multi-loop course, which is going to be good for you. You have a devastating run leg and always want to know where you are in the race. Swimming, you get the Aussie exit, you get to run out, so you get to see your position. On the bike, you're going to see everybody going in and out all the time. And then on the run, obviously, it's going to be the same sort of thing. There's going to be timing mats all over the place on the run course, so we're going to get a great idea where everybody is. So it's going to be great for the spectators today. You are a fan of the, uh, the loop courses as well? Yeah, I think uh, at this point we better become fans of the loop courses because I think that's what we're up to. So, you know, the, we got to adapt it. We got to get used to it. This is what the PTO events are, is we're making it exciting races and races that people are able to really watch and enjoy. So I think as athletes, we got to get on board that this is what we're doing. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, not only uh, is it good, you know, for the spectators, very engaging, but the athletes have then got to, you know, if you, you're talking about a race that goes out and back for 80K, then 40K out, 40K back, Athletes get a better idea and age their puts, their wattage outputs and everything better. However, this race is something like getting out of the saddle and pushing the, maybe 600, 700 watts out of the corners and, and getting settled back in. Paula, don't laugh. It's true. Yeah, it's true. 
you're very strong. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> but uh, getting out of the saddle, I mean, some of the guys are, you know, pushing 800 to 1,000 watts out of the corners. Uh, we, we saw what happened with the Tour de Femme and the, the Tour de France just over the last couple of weeks. So it's absolutely incredible to see that. So tactics have to be a little bit different. Nutrition has to be really on point. Okay, we're going to go over and ask a few questions. We've got uh, the gentleman over there. Yep, you. I think it's best that he come to the front. Yeah. Oh. He said, what's common knowledge among pros, but so, something that maybe most age groupers haven't figured out yet? Thank you. I don't have a hearing aid just yet, but I think I should get one. But anyway, okay, answer the question. <laughs> uh, my feeling about that is just that you don't have to do a ton of like crazy epic stuff or think too hard. Just train consistently every day and it doesn't happen overnight. It's just a long-term view. Yeah, also, maybe somebody else might want to talk about, uh, you know, peaks and valleys and up to those important races and doing the harder workouts, uh, you know, through the week. Uh, Paula, you're, you're training not only for the PTO US Open, but training for the time trial, uh, you know, over in Glasgow. So obviously there's got to be some peaks and valleys in there. How many days do you go hard? How many days do you go easy? And maybe give us an idea of what you do, or is it a secret? Um, yeah, I think um, a lot of the questions I get on our TTL podcast are about just how to deal with injuries, and obviously we deal with them a lot. And thankfully, as triathletes, if you're injured on the run, you still have the bike and the swim that you can focus on. So that's actually how I improved my bike so much over the last 10 years, was just being injured running so much and putting a lot more focus on bike workouts and bike skills and improving that aspect so I would say if you do happen to have an injury in one of the three don't panic there's still a lot of racing ahead and um, put a little focus on the other two sports mm -hmm. all right yeah Taylor went through that exact uh, same thing just recently so we'll save the next question to you Taylor next question out there please we've got one down here come on up here buddy ask your question through the microphone what's your name How does it feel to be a professional triathlete? Give him a round of applause. I mean, that's an incredible question. So, Taylor, what is it uh, like to be a professional athlete? You're not only a professional athlete in triathlon, but also cycling. Well, I think I'm still learning, and I think I'm still learning what it means to be a professional athlete um, every day. But I'm really grateful for the opportunity, and there are many days where I'm grateful for what I get to do every day. I love my day to day. Like, I think that if it were taken away I'd miss like yes I'd miss the racing but I also I just I really enjoy what I do every day um but there's also days where I don't want to get out of bed and I don't want to do everything so it's not like all sunshine and roses there are peaks and valleys as you were saying earlier but as a whole I'm extremely grateful and grateful for the opportunity yeah it's a great job Zachary I hope that we remember your name 10 years from now and uh winning the youth nationals and becoming a professional triathlete one day great question mate Good luck in the future. All right, next uh, question over there. Here we go. All right, no self plugs here. Yeah, so I was going to say, I coach an NCAA triathlon team, and I wanted to hear what you all had to say. Just talk a little bit about longevity in the sport, what you would tell to these, these women that are here racing today and racing in college to kind of stay sustainable. Thank you for your question. Um, yeah, I would probably just say to enjoy the sport when you can, when you're young, and I guess not try and think you have to do too much and too soon. Don't compare yourself to us. We have a full-time job, which is triathlon, so um, sometimes it's best if you just take a step back and try and... You know, do your sport, but enjoy other things in life as well when you're young. And I think that's really important for longevity and also um, injury prevention and just being a healthy athlete um, physically and emotionally. So I think that if you have that balance when you're really young, you can get to a certain age where you can decide how much you want to commit to that sport. If you want to go all in, that's awesome. And that's when you can try and take that step up in training and um yeah, try and make it as a professional athlete. Yeah, well said. Um, I followed Ashley's career very closely. 
and um, Ashley came up through the junior ranks and then she went into the um, Australian team that travelled the world for over 10 years. She went to a couple of Olympic Games, also the Commonwealth Games uh, champion, so she's been right through it. And then after a point, she changed focus from the Olympic distance over to the 70.3 distance and now PTO at 100k. So there's been like three different stages of Ashley's life and then What's so good about Ashley, she knows when to go off the grid, and Paula too, I, I follow them both. You can follow them on, on social media. And um, Josh and Ashley, they just load up their, uh, their their Land Rover and just, they go off the grid. They put their cell phones away and they go camping on the beach and, and just do those different things. So it's it's really important to have a day-to-day -day lifestyle, you know, outside of training all the time. All right, we got uh, time for one more question before we ask, uh, that if you do want photographs with our ladies today, we are going to uh, be over here at the PTO tent. We need to get them out of the sun and uh, so they can race really well tomorrow. So one more question right here. Come to the front, please. What's your name? Where are you from? And uh, what's your question? Uh, I'm Joshua Hernandez. I'm from Texas, so I'm like a thousand miles away from here. My question is, what's your, what's the best way to uh, become a professional after missing, uh, like if you're a late oncoming triathlete, how do, like, how do you become a professional? Do you guys struggle with that, or did all of them just come from the team, like, um, like some sort of high level Thank you. Do you want me to answer this? Or? Um, well, so I think that in the United States, there's, like, it's, you can earn your professional license in a lot of different ways, but then it's, I think there's like another step to be able to do it full time. Um, so I think it's just kind of developing and what are your goals and how long do you kind of anticipate getting there? I mean, at the end of the day, like it's, it's a very long process and I think I took my pro license when I was 18, but then there's a long way that's still learning and I think I'm still learning, but um, it's, it's a sport where, and to answer your also question earlier with the NCAA, like, it's a sport that I think rewards patience and sometimes it's what may look like a step or two back might actually be three steps forward in just a year's time. So it's kind of sticking with it and having other things in life, like Greg was saying, to be able to, like, triathlon isn't your whole world. That's always helping. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. Uh, you know, the, uh, the ladies are always in the gym or just working out, you know, on their you know, core strength or you know their diets and also their nutrition and trying to figure out what formula works best for them over the longevity of the sport ladies and gentlemen would you give a big round of applause for jackie herring paula finlay taylor niven ashley gentle number one pto rank athlete in the world we also want to say uh good luck to you paula when you go off to glasgow uh, next week after tomorrow's race. So that's really, really incredible. If you want a photo or a little discussion with our athletes, please come on over to the PTO tent right now. 